This is a NACE Interlibrary Loan training video on searching, specifically on how to use the Advanced Search screen. If you're interested in information about basic searching functionality, there is a separate video on that. Today we will be working as the Ladybug School Library. You'll notice I am already logged into the NACE ILL system as the Ladybug's Interlibrary Loan account login. To do an advanced search, you click on the word advanced up here on the right hand side of the main search box. This will open up the advanced search screen, which gives you a set of boxes that you can fill in your search terms to search different indexes using different combined operators. Note at the bottom of the screen here that the default search is for 1,387,159 records. That is the number of records that are in the new PAC Union Catalog at the moment. It is not all of the records that are in the interlibrary loan system, but just the ones that are in the actual Union Catalog. All of the components of the advanced search screen are built in real time based on the contents of the Union Catalog. When you execute a search here, you are searching both the Union Catalog and the Z targets that are configured in the system, but the information that's provided here in advanced search to help you figure out how to dial in your searching is only based on the Union Catalog because until the searches execute, the system has no idea what is in those other databases that are accessible via Z targets. So let's do a basic search here, or an advanced search actually, um, and let's do our search for the general keyword of large print, and then I want to add the title element of song lark, and then I want to add the title element of, uh, the, I'm sorry, the author element of Cather. And you'll note that the search button is already telling me I'm only going to find one record. That is the one record that is in new pack that meets the criteria that I have added. So when I combine all the information that I want, I'm going to click search, and it's going to search both the new pack which is what comes right back, and then any Z targets that are out there as well. Um, so when I do my complete search, I come back, to, I get back the results from both the new pack and the Z targets. And in this particular case, there's only two records that come back. is a large print edition of Willa Cather's Song of the Lark. Now, as we saw in the basic searching video, um, there are a variety of things I can do with these search results. I can limit them by facet, I can group them, I can sort them, I can change my layout display. All of those things apply to the results set that you get from an advanced search, just as they do from a basic search. So if I want to go back and complete another advanced search, I have two options for how I can get there. I can click Modify Search here, which will take me back to my previous search screen with all of my information that I entered before still there. If I want to start with a new advanced search in an empty screen, I want to use the advanced link up here. That's what I'm going to do is click Advanced again, just like I did to begin with. And that's going to take me back to this advanced search screen with everything all emptied out. So in addition to just putting in what's already there, I can make some choices here. And I can put in a search term. Let's say I want to put in a search, I can put in a search term and then I can tell it I want an exact phrase, I want any of the words or all of the words. And then I can also change the index that it will search. So any of these search indexes are available to me to build my search. Record numbers, Dewey numbers, other standard numbers includes things like UPC codes. There's a couple of SUDOC, uh, government document things, SUDOCs and GPO item numbers. Notes are available to, to me to search. And any of these fields can be chosen. I can also change my Boolean operators. As we talked about in the basic searching video, the Boolean operators are going to work quite well in the Union Catalog and much less well 
in the um, Z targets. So you want to keep that in mind when you are changing your Boolean operators that you may not really be getting everything that you might want to be getting. In addition to putting in different information, I can also change the sort order of my result set. I can do change to relevance, title ascending, descending, and so forth. Relevance is the default in the system, so that will be your default, but for any search you can change that. One, let's do another um, search. Let's change to subject as my first index, and I want to search for the subject word history, and then in the title I'm interested in food, and let me sort this by date descending. So the most recent things will appear first, and I will click my search button down here at the bottom, and I will get a set of search results here that I can uh, work with. So if I want to modify this search and add some other information, and notice there's still some Z targets out there hunting for me, um, now they have finished. So I'm going to modify my search this time, so I'll click the Modify Search link, which will take me back to Advanced Search, um, and the things that I had already put in there are still set, except that my sort order does not stick. Um, you do have to redo the sort order when you modify your search. But your words are still in your boxes, and the things that you had chosen here are also still set. So if I wanted to add some information, some filters to this search as I build it, I can do that from the lower part of the screen here. I have a couple of options available to me to filter my search. I can filter by years of publication. I can filter by formats. And this is showing me just the things that are in this 282 record set that is created by choosing subject history and title food. So I know, for example, that there are no, I don't know, microfilm format records that come back from this search, because that's not a choice. I can only choose things that are there in the union catalog. There may be things out in some of the Z targets that would meet this criteria. There are other formats, but I can only choose the formats that are here. So let's, say let's limit to DVDs, and then we'll do the search. So I find, in fact, when I search between the Union Catalog and the Z targets, that there are, in fact, more than the five things in the Union Catalog. I get 23 things, and there are still two search results sorting out there. They didn't apparently have anything. Um, so from this larger group, I can filter. My DVD format filter is already there. If I want to add an additional filter, let's say I'm only interested in National Geographic things, I can do that, and that will give me that will filter my search set just like it did with the basic searching. If I go back and modify the search again. I have the DVD filter in place. I do not have the additional filter that I added uh, of publisher because it is not part of the advanced search screen, so it doesn't transfer when I come back. So your best bet to really filter an advanced search with a lot of, of criteria is actually to do the search, then from your search results set, use the faceting to bring it down to a smaller group. But if you know that you are only interested in one of these options that's here in this filter, set, you can use that. There's also a language filter available to you, and you'll notice that this is, again, there were five records because I have the filter in place for DVD, so my language options, there's apparently four in English and one in Spanish. If I uncheck DVD, I get a lot more possibilities here in my language filters. I now have 281 English items, I still just have one in Spanish. So those are how you your filter function, that is how your filter functioning works in the advanced search screen. The other piece of this screen that we haven't talked about is searchable catalogs. By default, and I'm going to collapse these just to clean up my screen a little bit using these little arrows. I can make them go back and forth, smaller, larger, and so forth. Search catalogs works the same way. I can expand it out or limit it down. 
and if it shows me the library catalogs, it shows me all my library catalogs. At the moment, we're having an issue where the checkbox is above the name instead of next to it. Autographics is looking into how to make that fix so that the box is next to it, but at the moment it is not being cooperative in that respect. So all of the library catalogs are by default selected for the purposes of interlibrary loan that is absolutely what you want. If you wanted to search for um, cataloging records, you might want to just use the new pack and you can change that here. You can change that as well using the little um, stack of coins, pancake, kind of little icon in the basic searching, um, but it is also available to you here on the advanced search screen. So if you are doing an advanced search, this is where you would change your catalog search by clearing everything out of there, and then it tells you, hey, you have to have something, um, and then you can choose the thing that you do want, for example, just new pack, and then build your search there, and it will um, limit you to just that one uh, catalog. So I'm going to go back to check all and I'm going to collapse that down again. The other thing I want to talk about with advanced searching is the fact that you can actually change the default search indexes here. So the default is going to be general key, when you that is system wide is that your three index choices are general keyword title and author if you want to change those for your login and that will apply to the entire log any the login and anyone who uses it so if you're sharing the interlibrary loan login with someone else in your library or several someone else's you'll want to make sure that you're all in agreement before you make it a change to the default indexes you can change them on the fly in any search and that will only apply to that search or that session if you keep coming back to modify search um, but if you want to change it so that the default is always for example subject at the top here's how you do that you go to your account and you choose your preferences and on your preferences among the things that you can choose are default advanced search indexes, first, second, and third. They're going to be set to use library default. That means that they are set to use whatever the system-wide default is. So if NAS changes what the default is for one of these, if you have used library default chosen, that change that's made globally will apply to your library. But if you want to choose your own, like let's say we want to make number one the first search index subject, you can make that change here and save your change. And then when you've made that change, it'll tell you it's been saved and you say OK. When you now go back to advanced searching, however, you'll see that it did not change. That is because you have to log out of the account and log back in to have that um, change take effect. It isn't an automatic change. It applies once you've logged out and logged back in again. So now my default for the Ladybug Library Interlibrary Loan account is to have the first index be subject. So I can now do my, I can still make any change that I want to and go back to using general keyword or have my first one the LCCN or any of these options are available to me um, in my search session, but the default here will now be advanced search. If I use the clear all button, it will erase anything I have changed and take me back to my defaults on this window. So that is the basic information about the advanced searching. If you have questions about using the advanced searching functionality of the NAS Interlibrary Loan System, please call the help desk at 603-271-2141, or you can send an email to this address on your screen. Thank you for watching.